It's amazing. Look at that. It's amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, barometer, that, that could almost be a turner. This piece is drawing on the work of Turner primarily, but also of Helen Frankenthal. The brief was to write something inspired by both of them, and I decided to just focus on Turner, but as, my, as I researched, I realised that there were more similarities, so it's really inspired by both of them. You know, we could be at the beginning of something really significant here. The idea of uh, putting all those elements together really, really interested me, and I knew that Emily would write a, a terrific piece. singing in amongst the paintings is really special. And then there's this real sense of, of being part of something really big. This piece isn't applied to specific artworks, but it's applied to the creative process of these two artists on the whole. She painted freely with no rules, no preconceptions. She just did what the hell she wanted. That's what I do when I compose. everybody here has their music and half the time I'm dishing out music and missing half of it. Very strict, very professional, very lovable. Yes, she is a really lovely person. She puts us through it, makes us sing all the hard bits in the song. She's always saying, Daphne, uh, where's the music? What music have you got? Stop making all that noise. Oh, I'm always in trouble with Emily. I'm a tenor, so we generally get the boring part. We add depth to whatever's been sung. So the sopranos on one side and the autos on the other, and they're stunning. There's a part in it where it just stops and then the auto starts singing, and it's really emotional. You can even see the audience all getting swept up in it. composed specifically for this choir, I found very exciting. When we first sung it through a few times, I think, I don't think I was the only person. I think a lot of us thought, what have we got here? Wasn't too sure about it. I sometimes think, oh, am I gonna be in the firing line today? <laughs> Um, yeah, keep a low profile. I want more from you. <coughs> Not just all of you. And again. More. Everything you've got. One, two, three, four. The default choice of sound. Yes. She's enormously... Uh, Gifted, I think, as a, a not only as a teacher but also as a as a musician. Spritz, 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 spritz. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, be fun, won't you? Spit, 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 spit. I'm going to do that so I don't get. Sometimes I think we're a bit taken aback with what she comes out with. I think, oh, Emily, perhaps you shouldn't be saying that. I know it's you. I tend to view the paintings in a relatively superficial way. That is, the colour's great. Uh, I like the titles even, you know. Um, but then when, you, when, I re when I read the, uh, the text written either by her or for, for her, it's very, very dense and very, very complex and sometimes fairly hard to engage with. A lot of people would say that they perhaps don't understand a piece of art unless someone tells them something about it. And I think the music actually can tell you something about the art, can make you feel something. And music's very close to your emotions. And I think so it could be a bridge between art that's harder to access. Some people just say, oh, it's just a line on a piece of paper. My kids could do it. But there was more feeling and depth and emotion. And, and you understood it because you were part of it. They were so different, the paintings, and yet so alike in other ways um, and I thought that Emily brought that out in the music really well. The choir have, have followed a similar journey to myself really in terms of knowing more about art. For some of them they, they've said we just enjoy the music regardless of the arts. Quite a few said they found it quite provocative and peaceful and poetic and yeah I'm really pleased with it so far. Grimsby and Cleethorpe's where I'm from, where whole sections of the town are closed, um, that were really, really prosperous, and it feels like Margate is, is on the up, on the up from that, and, and there's something really positive about it, despite the closed buildings, there's something really beautiful about it, hopeful, I guess. My body is the sea, draw my eyes in the We're a week before now, and tonight we're doing a bit of a, a full run, we're meeting our sign language interpreter, and we're having a, a bit of a run through in the performance space, might be doing a bit of recording, so it's all really coming together right at the last minute. <laughs> College and the School for the Deaf here and I just thought it would be really nice because we're doing a, a multi-artistic medium event to also incorporate a sign language interpreter to complement the fact that there will be poetry and song and art. As snails trail o'er the morning dew, he thus the lines of beauty drew. Those far faint lines vermilion dyed with wonder viewed, enchanted cried, vermilion's honours mine and hence to stand, the alpha and omega in a painter's hand. started researching the project I had no idea what what the piece was going to sound like and looked for, for inspiration anywhere that I could from Helen Frankenthaler and Turner and it's really changed the way I write because through all the research that I've done and the exploration of the artists I've, I've written in a completely new way to before so what I've what I've composed is nothing like anything I've ever written before but it was so exciting about composing music inspired by artists it never will be the same
pieces that she brought for us to sing. Uh, not quite sure about that, but as they evolved, um, I began to really enjoy the sound and uh, the feel of singing, the, the music that she'd written for us. We were developing, you could see the choir really coming to grips with it and getting more, more of the subtleties of the music. about whether you could pull this project off? Oh, yeah. After I started it, I thought, what the hell did I get myself in for? I started to, to, to feel pressure. I wasted a holiday, sat in front of a window with a beautiful Cornish view and a piano, almost crying and pulling my hair out. I just couldn't come up with anything. It was agonising and then I came home from my holiday, a wasted holiday, and within 10 minutes I wrote it. <laughs> I could be a, a, seen as a control freak, but I'm really happy. It's really smooth, there's been no huge hiccups. And I think that comes from having one person just deal with it, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah. Sorry, should I look at yeah. I didn't look in the mirror, I was just like smeared. <laughs> Okay, can we just do a nice and without the, uh, the chin and again? No. The end result is a much higher standard than I, I, I thought I could produce as a composer and the choir just sound amazing and so much has changed in terms of the project has really become fine-tuned. Initially I just had an idea and the whole process has really given me focus on exactly what it is I want to do. So how many are in the choir today? Seventy. That's a good turn now, isn't it? No, it's the most we've ever had. Are people taking days off work? Yeah, they all have actually. But the actual day was absolutely fantastic for all, all manner of reasons and and the two did did marry up for me personally. It, it did make me think about the paintings, the sea, the, what, what we've got around us. Have you heard any of the compositions? Um, not today, so I'm looking forward to it. It's quite exciting, actually. She hasn't got a clue. <laughs> no, it's got no, no clue. clue. No clue what it's going to sound like. OK, Emily, how are you feeling? Today's performance day. I'm shitting myself. Emily. <laughs> Sorry, mother. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to give our debut performance of Landscapes that has been written and conducted by Emily Peasgood. It's been inspired by the landscape works of Turner and Helen Frankenthaler, and it is being sung by the Big Sing Choir. My first visit, although I live locally, I'm ashamed to say this is my first visit to the Turner Centre. The paintings of, of Helen really kind of captured the music and vice versa of the kind of the soft tones of the, the singing and then suddenly the crescendo, it's like you know a big splash of paint then um, you know developing into a seascape or a storm or something um, and I really felt that in the music. I've got quite emotional actually. I do. I did when I saw the when I came in. I didn't actually expect to, to see a performance today. I just brought my mum and dad who lived in the Isle of Wight down the first time, so we actually went in, and that's a real fantastic surprise. <laughs> it's a community choir and they're all volunteers which I find difficult to believe because I think they're singing so good we face
engage the audience. And on the first one we did, somebody started crying. That's how amazing it is. In one performance, I, I really became quite emotional myself. I can't remember what part it was that I actually sung, but I had trouble singing it because it, it got me so much. It's a fantastic way to bring something that is obviously flat to life in, for the senses, because I think that's so key, especially, especially now more than ever, to really start to bring people into the art world in new ways that really engages them on a kind of deeper sensory level. The essence of it, and of course the acoustics in there are lovely, so it echoes around. Now it made me think of space, and if that's possible. Absolutely. Sort of more stirring about having the whole experience of kind of the atmosphere, the music, being surrounded by the paintings at the same time. Having the words of Turner, Frank and Thala, the music of Turner as well, all interwoven, it was very clever. I now look at landscapes and stand and pause, and it's taught me to do that. I thought it was fantastic, you know, it made me aware, with the interpreter there, I could really picture what it was all about. It made me feel like I was linked, everything was linked with the world, like things that grow, and painting, everything creative and art. That hugely um, affected me in terms of it really brought together I guess the, the old and the new that was what I quite liked about it at the Turner and I, I kind of saw on the wall that it was it's, it's kind of generations of art but now bringing it in together with sound. It was nice to hear the music and see the paintings at the same time somehow it seemed to complement particularly there was one behind with a green um, colour and it just felt like the landscapes that they were talking about in the music to me. The music had a lot of movement, the painting certainly had a lot of movement. Both of them had depth of feeling. With the painting it was all the different greys and the whites. It was just so lovely how she got the connection immediately with artists and the, the, the use of colour and light and sound. Whoever organised this today, I applaud that person. And it's just lovely to see and hear the voices. You enjoyed it, didn't you, darling? My daughter here and today. But it's it's just it's fantastic. Really good. Yeah, really good. Singing goes straight to your heart. It's a very emotional thing, isn't it? If you can connect with that, you'll feel happy, you'll feel joyous. I certainly did. Um, it was powerful. You know, for deaf, it's different. You sort of feel things. It's, but I feel as if I've had the same experience as everything else. I can see the art now, and I feel as if it's been a really good experience.